knees up. This is going to figure in mightily with the judges. So you think this will put you over big with them, do you? No, not in points, but it'll be in the back of their mind when they choose my jelly for the grand prize. That's what you call psychology. Well, don't you think it'll work? Oh, who asked you anyway? You did. I heard you sitting right here. Oh, holy Hannah, what in the world? What? It's lordy. It smells like cigar smoke and motor oil. I'm just taking the balloons to the... I'm just blowing the balloons up, Doris Jane. I'm not taking them to the senior prom. Oh, I hope this will put a damper on all that. Well, I blew a lot of them up in the carport and brought them here already done. Oh, I see you're busy in here. Hello, Doris Jane. Hello, Lula. Hi, Hal. Howdy, Lou. My name is not Lou, it's Lula. Well, I'll have to try and remember that. Did you bring, do you have your jelly ready for the competition? Yes, ma'am, I do, and thank you for inquiring. <coughs> Doris Jane Shuttle? Doris Jane? now you know darn well, I keep my jelly, I have entered the contest every year, this year and every year. In a matter of fact, oh, I usually win, don't I? Uh, let me think about that. Yeah, she does. She did last year. Hey, that's my balloon holding shoulder. Goodness me, have any of you seen Tommy Rogers? Hi, Ty. Mr. Shotemeyer. Hi, Ty. Mrs. Shotemeyer. Good day, Mr. Darcy. A very pleasant day to you, Mrs. Morris. Oh, man. You appear to <laughs> wounded, sir. I'm at my wit's end. At my wit's end. Did you ever get try to get teenagers to be serious for more than ten minutes? And then... He introduced him to William Shakespeare? Oh, my. Oh, is he in town? <laughs> <laughs> that shoulder is going to bruise up like a tattoo. Well, I'll tell you this. Tommy will be wearing that costume. Roman armor, shield, sword, the whole bit. If you see him, send him over. Is your drama, is your drama club going to present us with a presentation today? Hence the angst in my trembling voice. If any of you fine people do see him, Tell them to attend to me at the bandstand post haste. Yay, barely. Oh, you do make me laugh, Mr. Schoenmeyer. <laughs> Bobby Trahan, my family, Penny John. Bobby Trahan, my family, Penny John. You children get away from that sound system. Excuse me. <laughs> That's 
when it hit me. Every time I fix something, something else breaks. So, so it would appear. So I thought, uh, I thought I won't fix the fan. So you don't fix the fan, so what? Well, don't you see the face is just a waiting for that to happen? Then something else will go wrong. So if I don't fix it, <coughs> nothing else will break. I'm set for life. <laughs> <laughs> but what if something else does break? Well, then I get a new fan. I tell you, it's a no-lose situation. <laughs> so let me see if I got this straight. For your system to work, it has to stay broke? Now you got it. <laughs> oh, here's a new item. <coughs> Guess who Margaret has been seeing with? Finally, something I can understand. Do tell. Oh, none other than Cyrus Holcomb. Cyrus? Well, I never. And I've never seen Cyrus with anybody, neither. Me neither. And he, they were acting suspicious, were they? They were. Oh, so. Well, you know how Margaret June acts when folks is uh -huh. around. Worse. Oh, my cow. <laughs> Funny thing, I thought she was behaving a bit oddly when... Where, Gerald, don't, don't you put that thing in your mouth? Where'd you get that? What? Bonnie Marie, what did you get him to eat that? Gerald, you give... Give her that quarter back, Gerald. <laughs> Kids don't listen. Really don't. So... <coughs> So where was Margaret June and Cyrus seen that was at all suspicious on all? Well, in the Rialto movie house over in Pluto. Oh, in the back, in the corner, <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies. You know where the freak show is? Just look around, darling. <laughs> Well, I did. You did. I did. Well, what was you doing in the Rialto? Uh, in the back. Uh, in the corner. Uh, in the dark. Bonnie Marie, get us off the ground this minute. Get back here so we can see you. Kids don't listen. Really don't. And spoiled all of them, too. Sure makes you wonder about the future generation, don't it? It does, and they's the ones that's going to have to take care of us in our dotage. Ain't a backbone amongst them. There's a he-man type to be seen. That were the Rogers boy, weren't it? Uh, uh yeah. I, I worry about him. Me too. <laughs> Them kids go. <coughs> Bonnie Marie, Gerald, get back here this minute. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Somebody done left their lights on in the parking lot. Will the honor of a 1994 John Deere tractor please return to the parking lot? Your lights is on. Countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, but not to, not to <laughs> praise him. Yeah, that's right, praise him. The evil that men do lives after them, but the good, the good is often, is often, the good is often, oh yeah, the good is often entered with their bones. Interred with their bones. Oh, what? oh, shh. I'm oh, sorry. I'm so sorry about. Oh, um, uh, thank you, Glowworm. Gloria. My name is really Gloria. <laughs> um, uh, uh, right. Um, thanks anyway. It's okay, Chloe. Can, can I have my knife back? Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm dang to have this thing. Oh. You sound real good, Tommy. You was listening? 
Yes, I, I mean, no, I mean, well, I was just passing by and I heard you and you was doing a wonderful job. I don't know how you learned all that stuff. Why, oh, thank you. You know, I'm trying. I just, I just wish it was in English. Anyway, <laughs> the word is in turn. Huh? <clears throat> it means to be buried or entombed. The good is often buried with their bones, like that. Miss Burleson says, I have a way with words, so I try to look up a new one every day. Wow. <laughs> yeah, only, I just, I wish she hadn't said that now. But, but you think I was doing good, do you? Oh, she would tell me I do. You know, you can do anything you put your mind to. Oh, I thank you. You know, you sound just like my mama. <laughs> now that's a real target to shoot for. <laughs> yesterday when I was practicing my speech. Oh, you know, I couldn't help myself. I'm just crazy about Shakespeare. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a scamp, he is. Here you are, Tommy. You been going over your Antonio speech? He sure has, Mr. Darcy. And he sounds real good, too. Really good, Glory. He sounds really good. Oh, heck fire. I was correcting her modifier. What? You know, Gloria, if you could help us out or... Gloria, over okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> if you could sit and listen to his speech... I'd be more than happy to help out. And you'll see how dynamic that speech is when you have an audience. Well, yeah, I can tell you for a fact it didn't do much for the cows. <laughs> you know, Tommy, you didn't have to wear all this armor. Well, yes, sir, I did. It's for defense. It's just silly. Marcus Antonius should be wearing a toga. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a free-flowing garment, much like a gown, which hangs to the floor. Oh! Now I think I'll keep with this stuff. Thanks, though. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Now, if you will send me your podium and render forth your eloquent oration to your waiting proletariat. You want me to do my piece to her? Get up there. Yes, sir. <laughs> Miss Pagan, if you'll watch, listen, and then give us your opinion. Oh, I'd be more than happy to, sir. And now, uh, Marcus Antonis, you may... Oh, Tommy, why are you holding that shield like that? Well, the minute I start, the guys are going to chunk stuff at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, the guys and the boys will not chunk crawl anything at you. Well, what's going to stop them? Nothing. Well, then I'll beat this thing. Fine. If you'll have a seat. You may begin. Yes. <laughs> what did you gargle with this morning? Drano? Gargle? <laughs> begin. Yes. <clears throat> Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come not to praise Caesar, but to bury him. The evil that men do lives after them, but the good is often interred with their bones. You remembered! Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so let it be with Caesar. The, the, the noble Brutus has told you that Caesar was ambitious. And, and if it were so, it were a grievous fault. And grievously hath Caesar answered it. <laughs> we should have done Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is I own Jack Straw. Many of you know me as the lunch lady up at the high school cafetoria. Well, now I have put down my big spoon for a moment to remind you that I am running for mayor of Black Rock. Are you tired of getting leftovers and cold cuts from the present mayor? Is everything watered down time against you? Would you like something fresh for a change? For years I have served your children. Now won't you let me serve you? This selection, vote Jack Straw. She has the recipe for progress. Thank you. <laughs> Would you like to know your fortune? Would you like
like to know your fortune. Would you like to just get off your feet for a moment? Right this way. Swami River knows all, sees all, tells all. Just three dollars and find out what fate has in store for you. He reads tea leaves. He reads palms. He reads cards. He reads meters. <laughs> right this way, folks. So what do I tell them? Just whatever comes to you. Shoot, you know everybody in town. Everybody knows everybody else's secrets. Just spell out of you. Uh-oh. What? This could be trouble. This could be three dollars. <laughs> Margaret Jude. What is it, Fiona? Here's your chance, show to find out your past, your present, your future. Right this way. Oh, I don't put much door in all that. Well, now, what are you afraid of? Nothing. That'll be three dollars. <laughs> I'm afraid of that. Well, it's for a good cause. It is for a good cause, ain't it? Well, I was hoping for a trip to Europe. Of course it's for a good cause. We're trying to get the school bus repainted. Well, I guess. They're supposed to be yellow, you know, instead of that camo stuff. That thing just sits there waiting on the kids, <coughs> and they can't find it. <laughs> okay. Who is the swami anyway? Never you mind. Now, you just come have a seat. Swami, we have a fish on. <laughs> okay, swami. Wait, wait. First, the swami must get into his trance. His trance? Oh, me! Or it was 
a question. A question? She wanted you to ask her a question? Gee, Cyrus, what question was that? Oh. <laughs> Again, folks, don't forget to stop by the games area for a good time. Right this way, folks, and you gents out there, step up and show the little ladies what a he-man you are. Hit the target with the mount and ring the bell at the top of the pole. Only the real men can do it. Right this way. There you go, sir. Take your best shot. And this gentleman wins a Cupid doll for his lady fair. Hear that, folks? Everyone's a winner. What about you, sir? Take your best shot. There you go. There's your mallet. Take a mighty swing. Wow, you missed the board altogether. Man, that's sure going to leave a mark. Okay. 